Just as we have hit record, the US Space Command confirmed to the NASA directorship that an interstellar meteor discovered by a student of yours and yourself, Amir Siraj, I think I'm saying the name correctly, in 2019 is indeed of interstellar origin. The detection, I believe, happened in 2014, which predates Oumuamua by more than three years. So this object, this meteor, will now be recognised as the first interstellar object ever discovered. Can you tell us just a little bit about that? And then I do have a question on the back of that as well as pertains to the equipment. Yeah, so this uh, discovery is very exciting for a number of reasons. First of all, um, I was uh, invited to an interview in uh, March 2019 uh, about uh, a a meteor that... um, uh, was uh, recognized um, around that uh, time a few months earlier that was quite powerful. And uh, I read a, a little about it uh, before the interview so that I'll be knowledgeable. And then uh, uh, while reading background on meteors, I realized, well, there is actually a catalog of meteors uh, uh, that the U.S. government has data on. And uh, so then I approached my student and I said, look, why don't you check this catalog and see if any of the uh, velocities reporter reported for these meteors measured by the U.S. government uh, indicate that any of these objects came from outside the solar system because if they move very fast relative to Earth, you know, they might have originated from far away. And so uh, um, he, uh, his name is Amir Siraj. He's an undergraduate at Harvard College. And so he went to the catalog and looked at the fastest object reported relative to Earth. And turned out that this object was on a head-on collision. The Earth moves in some direction, and this object came exactly from the opposite direction. So it's not, it's not necessarily unbound to the sun. It, 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 it's probably bound to the sun. It didn't come from outside the solar system. So then he went to the second object in the list, and he found that this object actually uh, had a, a speed of uh, 40 kilometers per second outside the solar system. If you uh, subtract off the the motion of the Earth and then uh, calculate its own motion uh, relative to the Sun and 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 go back in time. You f- you realize that he actually was very fast even outside the solar system. So that was very exciting uh, because it indicated that this object is interstellar. So we wrote a, a, a scientific paper about it saying, well, this object was discovered uh, on uh, January 8th, 2014 at uh, 5 in the afternoon. Um, and it's uh, 3.75 years before Oumuamua. Uh, and uh, it was found uh, north of uh, Manus Island, uh, off the coast of Papua New Guinea. Uh, and um, we you know, describe the calculation and argue that it's the first interstellar object that uh, was detected on Earth. And it was just missed, even though if it, it was in this catalog, nobody actually uh, wrote a paper saying this is an inter- of interstellar origin. So we submitted the paper in 2019, uh, March 2018, after my interview, and uh, within a few days from that, and Uh, submitted it to the Astrophysical Journal, and then we got a referee report back saying, you know, in that catalog of the government, there are no error bars. Uh, We don't trust the government. It's most likely this object has large uncertainties in the measurement. And I thought to myself, that makes no sense because the U.S. government is after ballistic missiles, right? And they need to know whether they land on... Boston or New York. They need very high precision. So if you're telling me that the aero budget should be huge uh, at a level that would make this object bound to the sun, that means the government doesn't know what they're doing. They can't really predict what ballistic missiles uh, are, you know, which target that they're moving towards. And I I cannot believe that, you know, that doesn't make sense. So, So we actually, at the time I was chairing the board on physics and astronomy of the National Academies and one of the members there was from Los Alamos, so uh, behind the fence of national security. So I approached him and said, uh, could you please give us assurance that the aero budget is indeed small so that this object is definitely of interstellar origin? And he went back and uh, discussed it. Uh, and then we got an email saying, yes, we can assure you <laughs> that it's interstellar. So then we went back to the referee of the Astrophysical Journal and said, look, we got this assurance. Uh, you should accept the paper for publication. 
And the referee said, no, I don't believe the U.S. government. This is not a public announcement. The paper is rejected. And you can ask yourself, why was this referee or referees, there were several of them, so hostile? My answer is because they are quote-unquote experts. They worked in this field for decades. They do not like the idea that someone else that is new to their field makes a discovery. So they would try to find any reason to dispute that discovery, even if it says the U.S. government doesn't know what they're doing. So the paper was rejected and, you know, just uh, sat on, on, on our desk for three years now. So in the meantime, uh, we, of, of course, informed uh, people uh, that assured us that this is interstellar and said, look, we need a more uh, official announcement. And gladly, after three years, you can see how long it takes to declassify error bars. They didn't actually declassify the error bar. They just made a public announcement from the Department of Defense, the United States uh, Space Command, and the, the letter is available for anyone to see. It was sent to the directorate of, uh, of NASA under the leadership of Thomas uh, Zurbuchen, who is responsible for all the science done at NASA. And in that uh, letter, they explicitly say that uh, the uh, discovery of the meteor by my student, Amir Siraj, and myself uh, is indeed a discovery of an object from an interstellar origin. And uh, they say that at the 99.999% confidence. 99.999%. So I ask you, why would the referee disbelieve the original report and the original email we had when the government is at the 99.999% confident? And obviously they would be because they have to know what they're doing in terms of monitoring the motion of objects, you know, in the sky, right? Yeah. So anyway, this is the bottom line. As of today, this letter was released and now we know there was an interstellar uh, object discovered before Oumuamua. Okay, P that's point number one. The second point uh, that it is significant is because this is a meteor. What that means is it came, it collided with the Earth. Okay, so um, of course it burned in in the atmosphere and there was a fireball and that's how it was detected from the fireball, from the heat uh, as a result of it rubbing against the air. But something, you know, some relic of it may have landed in the ocean. So we can put our hands on it. So there are two possibilities. Either this interstellar object is natural, you know, like people suggested about a muamua. Maybe it's a nitrogen iceberg. Maybe it's a hydrogen iceberg. You know, maybe it's a dust bunny. Well, clearly this one is not a dust bunny because a dust bunny would not burn up like a meteor. Okay, so here is an interstellar object that is not a dust bunny. And, you know, if any piece of it landed in the ocean, we can put our hands on it, which we cannot do with respect to Oumuamua. So that's the second reason why it's interesting. And I suggest, you know, let's go and search for it. 